everyone. Welcome into another episode of A Walk with the Warhawks. Today's show is presented by Raising Canes, located on South Clack Street, right here in South Abilene. Stop by and get some chicken. I did last night, by the way. Love it. Raising Canes, proud partner of McMurray Athletics and a proud partner of A Walk with the Warhawks. Today's show is also sponsored by McMurray Esports, and I'm so excited about that. McMurray Esports has been huge on campus. And for the first time this year, we're bringing on McMurray Esports for a walk with the Warhawks. We got the Rocket League team with us today. Guys, how we doing? Doing great. Doing good. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time. I know you guys have a busy schedule the next couple of days. But uh, before we kind of get into things, I want to introduce you guys. Uh, we have our captain, Logan Herring. He's going to wave at the camera. We got Christian Bryant, and we have Rob Samudio. All right, guys, this is awesome. I'm so excited for this. But um, – Something that's really exciting for you guys. Um, obviously, this year has been a huge year for Rocket League. Uh, during homecoming weekend, you guys got to be streamed on the video board at the football stadium. About 60 students uh, got to show up to watch that. You guys got to be streamed in the MCM Sports Grill. Uh, it's kind of been uh, watched around campus and around the community, but now you're getting to be on a national stage. Logan, you reached out to me uh, about two weeks ago to let me know that um, the CSL was going to put it on their national platform channel on Twitch, which has about 15,000 followers. That's got to be super exciting for you guys. So, Logan, you can start. Just talk about what this means to this team to, to be on that level. Um, yeah, so uh, like I had mentioned to you before, you know, this is, uh, this is the next step for us as far as uh, getting uh, exposure and getting our team out there. We've been working pretty hard, um, not just this year, but last year as well, on uh, trying to get our name out there and uh, – trying to see you know what works best as far as getting people to notice us and um gaining that exposure and it'd been uh it had been short kind of shorter scale smaller scale stuff um like the uh like the twitch streams that the school would run to uh the general audience or to our friends and family but now it's growing even bigger and um as our games get more important for this season um we're getting more exposure and that's pretty cool that's awesome. And Rob, it was kind of your original idea to do the video board at football, and that kind of sparked a little bit of this. But uh, now to be on a national platform, how does it feel for you? Yeah, it's, it's kind of awesome. Honestly, I wasn't expecting all that to happen just from one tweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool how it happened. But yeah, I'm sure it feels amazing to, to be going into this matchup against Tulsa now. Yeah, no, it's definitely an experience just to say that we're one of the show matches for – the people that were on this whole, our whole season. I think it's pretty crazy, but yeah. I don't know. It'll be, it'll be fun. I'm excited. Should be a lot of fun to watch as you guys are going to actually be battling for second place in the standings in the league. Uh, it should be a great matchup. Christian, this is your first year with the eSports team, and obviously you played men's soccer at McMurray, but talk about what this game means to you to, to know that it's going to be watched by a lot of people. Honestly, that's incredible that – the potential of 15,000 people watching a Rocket League game by us. That's just – when I heard about that, I was like, what? There's no way. you got to be – you're probably lying. And sure enough. Here we are. And it, it, it's all coming full circle. And uh, this whole thing started kind of small. And Logan and Rob, you were both on the team to kind of start with. But – uh, Logan, since you're the captain, go ahead and just kind of talk about what it's been like to play together with Rob for two years and adding Christian this year and just how this program has grown the last two years. Yeah, so um, when we started at the beginning of last year, we um, – honestly, I'd never met Rob before. Uh, didn't know anything about him. Um, we were put in touch with each other by, uh, by coach, and he was able to um, – he was able to kind of like – get us all in the same place between me, Rob, and Ryan. Um, we gelled immediately um, and just kind of took off, and, and we started playing. Uh, this league was our first league, the CSL League, last year. Um, we played well together. Um, as the year went by, we ended up uh, doing more and more, uh, well, just playing better as a team, um, gelling. And by the end of the season, you know, we had made a playoff spot, and we had we had played pretty well for our first year. And um, – we looked to continue that this year and picking up Christian, you know, it just feels like we've uh, kind of picked up right where we left off and continue, continuing to improve. So, Yeah, it's amazing for any first-year program to even have a winning record or even win some games, but you guys actually made a playoff appearance, made a playoff run. 
Um, very impressive for a first-year team and, you know, now battling for a top spot in the standings uh, coming up tomorrow on a national platform. But, uh, Rob, let's talk about you a little bit. Your story is a little more untraditional. Uh, you came here originally to play basketball a while back, and uh, now you've kind of found a home with the Rocket League team, and you're getting ready to finish up school soon. So just talk about what this whole process has been like for you over the last few years and how you've kind of found a home with Rocket League now. Yeah, uh, it's been a journey, to say the least. Um, I never played competitive basketball before I came here, which kind of freaks people out a little bit whenever I say that at first. But um, Coach Pick was gracious enough to give me a chance, and he decided to run with it, and like I couldn't be more thankful for that. Cause it was always my dream. Um, and, you know, stuff happened. I had to end up leaving for a little bit. But, um, yeah, no, uh, being back and then getting to play on the Rocket League team, uh, it just feels that, like, little competitive side of me. Um, just getting the opportunity to be able to do something with the school competitively, yeah, competitively again. Um, it's pretty awesome. I'm just happy to be here be another little part of what this school has to offer, especially now. Like, again, saying, like, first-year program, have a winning record. No one else can say, like, no one else can say that they were part of the Rocket League team yet. Only right. one person, and now Christian. So, yeah, happy to be here. That, that's amazing, man. You, you definitely got to be a pioneer for something and feel that competitive spirit like you talked about. And, you know, we see you a lot on campus. You're playing music. You're doing all kinds of great things. And uh, to, to have this as another thing is, is amazing to me. But, uh, Christian, let's talk a little bit about you as well as kind of the rookie member of this team. Uh, what's it been like trying to gel with these two guys as kind of the newcomer? And uh, talk about what it's been like juggling Rocket League between that and, you know, playing men's soccer for McMurray as a junior. Honestly, like Logan said, we seem to just immediately gel together and click really well. It didn't take very much time for us to learn how to play together and learn how to work together and adjust. Um, as for juggling soccer and esports, it honestly it wasn't as tough as I thought it would be. It was um, all I really needed to do is know when to prioritize one over the other and just kind of adjust my schedule along with schoolwork and like set up my day before it even starts. And that's what helped me. That way I could get all my schoolwork done and know when I'm going to go to esports and then know whenever I'm going to go to soccer practice. And just a little time management. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. It's worth it. It's worth the, all of the, I guess, stress and, work put into it no doubt not not to mention even the academic side of things so it's been kind of a, a busy time for you obviously but now you guys are kind of reaping the benefits but uh we're excited to see that game take place tomorrow night or, or sorry this will air on wednesday so tonight at 8 p.m on the twitch channel all the links can be found at mcmurraysports.com guys it's time for rapid fire are you ready totally all right yes, rapid fire all right, gentlemen, it's time for rapid fire. Right off the bat, first question I got to ask, and give me the right answer. It doesn't matter to me. I, I think I know the answer, though. Is there a team in your league that has a better hair game than McMurray? No, no, no. absolutely no. not. Like, are you kidding me? I'm looking at all three of you guys, and all three of you guys have a, a great head of lettuce. I can't believe it. <laughs> Look at this. No, I, I, could, I could honestly say – I think that we have the best hair in esports in general. I'm not I even... agree with that. Okay, now for the controversial question: Which one of you three have the best? Oh, uh, Christian. <laughs> yeah, Christian's hair is the coolest note for sure. <laughs> That's awesome, Christian. Do you Thank agree? You. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I do. <laughs> 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 oh my! So, so you guys are gamers. Uh, I gotta bring up a guy that you guys may have heard of, Xavier Woods. He's a wrestler, but he's also a big gamer. He's famous for up, up, down, down. I think of when I think of Christian's hair, I kind of think of him because he used to do this thing where he would like spray his hair 
And each <laughs> Christy, could you see yourself doing that one day? <laughs> I've never heard of that. Oh, come on, Christian. We got <laughs> maybe, a little land sometime. Maybe. <laughs> just get a big thing of water and just pour it all in your hair right before a soccer game and just walk out when we introduce your name and just go. Just yeah, do it. Do it. But but all three of you guys have a great head of lettuce, and uh, I think that just needs to be appreciated before we do anything else. So here we are. Um, next question I got to ask you guys though: What is the worst video game of all time, and what console is it on? I'm gonna say it because I hate it, but I love it. No, I'm just gonna say it, Rocket League. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the worst, but the best game for me. Okay, I understand. I understand. That's because just as much really as it's made me, as much as it's made me so happy, it's also made me so frustrated. <laughs> That's understandable. Logan, what about you? Um, honestly, the worst game, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I can't really, I can't really even think of one. But um, I've had my ups and downs with Rocket League. Even though it's the, even though it's the game we love to play, um, it does give us, it does give us trouble sometimes. You know, you hate losing. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, if I if I had to if I had to think about what game has made me the angriest over <laughs> over the course of my career, it has to be Rocket League. <laughs> hey, that, and you know what? That's not the answer I expected, but that's that's probably a really good answer, Christian. What about you? <laughs> the worst game I've ever played? Uh, sometimes it depends on the day of the week, but yeah, Rocket League can be pretty <laughs> annoying. Uh, I mean, I've played. Payday 2, and that one was pretty bad. And Fortnite's what? pretty bad. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, it's, I forgot. Dude, Battle Royales are up there. Good old, good old Battle oh. Royales. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Oh, no, I have one. Cuisine Royale. <laughs> I don't think I've ever played that one. What is that PC? It's PC and Xbox. I don't know if it's on PS4, but it's like... A knockoff of like it's not even a knockoff. It's like PUBG. Oh, you know what? You know what? So much worse. Ball 3D. <laughs> <laughs> so Dude, it's there's... not even free anymore. They're asking five dollars. <laughs> All right, so there's this game on Steam, uh, which is the PC platform, called Ball 3D, and it is a awful Rocket League ripoff, and it's. It's not even close. There's no cars. They're just like little. Well, I mean, I think there is a car mode, actually. Don't get me wrong. But they're like little like pucks that hit a ball around a field moving extremely slowly. That mm. is the worst game I've ever played. That sounds horrible on a lot of levels. It's awful. Wow. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> oh, so we got not only the worst, most frustrating game, but now we got the worst, most like unenjoyable, not fun game to play. Yeah. So it's good to hear both perspectives. Uh, next question, guys, based on your driving skills, because I know you guys have probably rode together and things like that. Who would be the best and worst player at, if Rocket League was a real life game that you actually had to drive around? Worst, Logan. Absolutely. I don't know. I haven't really? seen Christian drive. Rob, Rob would be oh, the best. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. That simple, simple as that. Logan, is there, is there any experiences you've had that, would make these guys say that you're a bad driver specifically? Rob? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say he's like necessarily bad. It's just very, very, very defensive driver. Okay. That's where I, that's where I was hoping you would go with that. Cause I'm the same way. I drive like a grandma and I get accused of that all the time. So I don't know how good I would be at driving. Yeah, so. no, see, I come, I come from, my dad was an amateur racer in almost everything. Motorcycles, dirt bikes, everything. <laughs> so that's gotten into me. So <laughs> I say we go over to the Abilene dirt track at some point and try to make this happen. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. All right. So, all right. So I know sometimes you guys get to play just for leisure. You're not always competitively playing because esports is so competitive and you have to work as a team and you're having to communicate. But if you're just playing on your own, just having fun and you get to listen to music in the background, what, what's your go to for that? And uh, Christian, you could start. 
personally, I don't like to listen to music whenever I'm playing games. Just it helps me to focus a lot more whenever I can hear the sounds of the game and whenever, well, I guess for Rocket League, like hearing cars go by so I can listen for who goes up and little things like that. But if I had to play music, it would be like rap music and like a game day type of playlist. Yeah. I mean, I, I respect the hustle, man. Like, you know, and I think of like men's soccer, you have a pregame playlist that you warm up to, but Rocket League, it's not exactly like that. You're just going into the action, right? That's right. Right. All right. Logan, what about you? Um, I've got a couple. So, um, and um, – they're they're kind of different than than what a lot of people would probably expect from me but i like to listen to a lot of lo-fi uh just stuff with this kind of steady beat behind it um something that'll that'll be there to kind of fill in white noise that i don't actually have to focus on a whole lot um i've got several different versions of playlists that i like for that um i've got like my star wars lo-fi playlist i have like my um like my cartoon like theme songs playlist that that are all put to lo-fi beats and then i have this one that i really like and it's uh it's like japanese like traditional music uh with the like a hip-hop beat behind it and that one's probably my favorite and then um when i'm looking for something a little more energetic and exciting i'll go to uh uk rap and grime it's a playlist by uh red bull that they put together of their best uh, british rap and I just love putting that on and just kind of listened into it and it gets me hyped. So, okay. First question to that. Can you send me links to all of those? Because I am amazed by the diversity of all the music that you listen to and how strategic it is as well. That is, that is probably the best answer of all time on this show regarding music in any form that that was amazing. So uh, Rob, you. unfortunately you have to follow that up. No, that sucks. I don't really have much. <laughs> Well, that's okay. Hey, what about your own music? Uh, here, let me see. What do I listen to whenever I want to play? I listen to a lot of Polyphia. Um, great band. A lot. Okay, no, actually, if I had to listen to a playlist whenever I'm playing, it's probably going to be like the math rock genre. Um, and for, like, if you don't know what math rock is, it's like, all of the very technical flair that you could do on any instrument. These people do it all the time and it just sounds insane. And it's just really cool. Okay. So, I'm intrigued. Send me a link to that as well. I'm very intrigued by that. That's awesome. I got you. All right. Sweet. All right. Uh, next question. So on this show, we have a rule. We always like to talk about food. I know Thanksgiving just happened. Thanksgiving's over with. And I know you guys probably ate pretty good on Thanksgiving. I know I did. Um, so guys, just share. If you can have one home-cooked meal, you can pick whatever you want. What is that meal? Uh, Rob, why don't you start this time? Home-cooked meal. The stuffing that my mom makes, I look forward to it every year. I only get it one day out of the year. And I hate that. Wow. Yeah, no, if that's – if I had to get anything from home, it would be that. So, one comment to that. Why do we have to wait for one day to pick the favorite thing that we like to eat? Can we not just have it whenever we want? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, and, you know, a lot of people like to eat turkey on Thanksgiving. Nope, not me. I had steaks and shrimp. I had surf and turf. So, that, you know, like, it doesn't have to be traditional. So, Rob, I respect that. Absolutely. Eat the stuffing that you want. Uh, Logan, what about you? So um, I actually kind of went the same way you did, and I got my uh, favorite meal this Thanksgiving. Um, so I came home and did a little untraditionally. My dad uh, cooked up some steaks, um, had the green beans and uh, potatoes going as well. And that, uh, that just kind of, it's comfort food. Uh, it's something that I can count on every once in a while when I, whenever I come home from school. Um, my parents do it to let me know they're happy to see me. And uh, for that, it's my, it's my favorite meal. I can dig that, man. That all sounds really good. Christian, what about you? My favorite home-cooked meal, I think it's got to be uh, chicken and dumplings. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> man. Like, just Never get enough of that. I know. The, the warmness <laughs> of, of chicken and dumplings just on a cold day 
is is one of the best feelings ever. So you know what? All three of you, mad respect for those answers. Very well done. Uh, final question for you guys. Favorite thing about McMurray and Logan, you could start this time. Um, definitely my friends. So um, just to, to everybody um, that, that knows me that I hang out with, um, you know, that's my, that's, that's the reason I'm here. Um, just the connections that I made with people, uh, my teammates, you know, these two are probably the best teammates I could ask for. Um, that's, that's really it for me is just the human connection. So. Yeah, you get that very well at McMurray, a very tight knit family. Uh, Rob, what about you? I would definitely say um, the community that's built around here. Like, again, coming from being here several years before this. <laughs> um, now that all of my friends have graduated and everything, um, the fact that I can still feel like I have people to talk to, even when coming into it, I didn't feel like I had anyone. I had to start fresh. I didn't have the connections that other people have, like with their freshman class and everything and all their little flocks. Um, I didn't have that anymore. Um, but everything here, um, just so welcoming and uh, just so willing to be there for people. Not just like the little things, like the organization stuff, but even just like the departments. Like the physics department for me has been especially huge um, just for that sense of community for me this year. Um, so yeah, definitely community. That's awesome, man. Really good answer. Uh, Christian, what about you? I would say it's a really close race between the experiences that you get at McMurray and the people at McMurray. The experiences, I mean, just by that I mean everything in general like for me it would be soccer it would be well for all of us it would be school here esports just been really fun and really enjoyable and something I don't think I would be able to get really anywhere else and people it's just the people are amazing here in Abilene and especially McMurray just all the professors are great all the people are great all the workers are great it's just a great environment to be around and really you can really feel a loving family like a genuine family here while being at McMurray. Wow very well said Christian we really appreciate all three of those answers and often I refer to McMurray as the land of opportunity and what an opportunity it's created for all of us on, on the zoom call even me getting to talk to you guys uh, I appreciate that but uh, you guys getting to uh, do what you're going to get to do tonight um with, with Rocket League and uh, what you've been doing uh, pretty much the entire semester and your entire college career. It's been, it's been amazing to see. And a motto we have with McMurray Athletics is developing champions for life. I see three champions on this call. Guys, thank you again for joining this call. We really appreciate you coming on the show. I appreciate you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yes, sir. Sure. All right. And good luck tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in next week for another episode of A Walk with the Warhawks. For Logan Harry, Christian Bryant, and Rob Samudio, I'm Mike Ezekiel. Have a great day.